This was one of the best shows that I watched this year. I cannot recommend it enough to you guys. It's set in the 90s and it combines action and romance and comedy in this very quirky way. But what stands out the most is the very nostalgic style of the series. It really harkens back to the old school Bollywood action films. And this was also reflected in the fabulous posters of Guns and Gulabs. When these posters were released on Instagram, I loved the references made to the Bollywood film posters of the past, the vibrant colors, placement of the actors and the font in the title design. There is so much history and importance to how Bollywood poster art developed. Before the digital age, Bollywood posters used to be hand painted. The painting of these vintage Bollywood posters is an art form. It was developed by local painters who were basically self-taught and they developed their own techniques to achieve this Bollywood poster art style. Well, this is a dying art form and it has resulted in hand-painted Bollywood posters becoming quite rare and collectibles. In this video, I want to discuss this fascinating part of the Indian film industry that isn't really talked about as much, the history of the hand-painted Bollywood poster, the style and techniques used in painting them, how these Bollywood posters even influenced the streets of Mumbai, and the Bollywood poster artists who have mostly remained anonymous anonymous for years. At the end of the video, I'm also going to let you guys know which actors' faces are really the big sellers for Bollywood poster art. So let's get into it. Historically, Bollywood posters have been a crucial element in the marketing of a film, as stated by Amitabh Bachchan in the book Bollywood in Posters. They, meaning posters, tell us within the brevity of a few square meters what the product is all about and why it is essential for us to buy that coveted cinema ticket, how a face must be used, which posture and in what dimensions must have gone through an intricate process to finally conclude in a form sufficient to entice the prospective cinegoer the hours of deliberation that ensued before reaching a final approval, the choice of colors, the words of description, the credits, all a most fascinating exercise in creativity, indeed almost on par with the effort required in making the film itself. Marketing for a Bollywood film today on social media is rampant and sometimes it's really excessive. The modern day Bollywood poster is usually just a still from the film and it's digitally enhanced and altered for its required purpose. This is completely different from the past where the extraordinary hand-painted Bollywood poster art and artists were an integral part in the marketing of a Bollywood film. So hand-painted Bollywood posters as we know them today were prevalent from the 1930s. These hand-painted posters were plastered around the cinema halls and the streets of Mumbai with all their vibrancy and emotion. Many credit self-taught Bollywood poster artists like Babu Rao Painter with inventing the art of designing the Bollywood posters completely by hand. From 1980s to the 1990s, cut out and digitized posters started to take over the space as they were cheaper and quicker to produce. Bollywood used to employ hundreds of painters to create posters for upcoming films, but now this is not the case. With the early 1990s came the end of the hand-painted Bollywood poster era. It was for this reason during the 1990s that hand-painted Bollywood posters of the past came to be considered more as works of art rather than just advertising for a film. Collecting these original hand-painted posters became an interest for many people that still continues to today. It's been reported that Shah Rukh Khan purchased an original hand-painted poster for the film Mughal that he got signed by the legendary male star of the film, Dilip Kumar. It's also interesting to note that the renowned Indian painter M.F. Hussain started his painting career in this field. In 2013, the first major auction of Bollywood memorabilia happened in the UK. Bollywood posters can be found at many museums around the world at this point. The Victoria and Albert Museum in the UK has a collection of vintage Bollywood posters and Indian cinema memorabilia. 
there is a Bollywood poster of Mother India at the British Museum and Mumbai has two museums that house Bollywood poster art being the National Museum of Indian Cinema and the Museum of Bollywood Posters. Interestingly, there are also thousands of Bollywood posters of vastly different quality, type and standard available for purchase at the Chor Bazaar in Mumbai. A New York Times article sets out the details of one of these shops in particular, the poster shop in Chor Bazaar. His tiny shop at Chor Bazaar is crammed with thousands of old film posters, lobby cards and assorted film memorabilia. In those days, Mr. Abu said, posters were larger than life, just as the movies themselves. The shop has both originals and copies, the former painstakingly and lovingly painted by hand for hours and even days. Mr. Abu counts among his regular customers, collectors from all over the world, the United States, Canada, Britain and of course across India. Although Mr. Abu's shop does not stock much material from English language movies, two other shops further down the road have these on offer. Exact origin of the hand-painted Bollywood poster is unknown. India's first ever feature film was a silent film called Raja Harishchandra and it was released in 1913 and printed literature was used to advertise the films during the silent film era, meaning newspaper adverts or handbills. Limka Book of Records credits Baburao Painter's hand-painted poster of his film Maya Bazaar, also known as Vatsala Haran in 1923, as the first poster of an Indian film, reportedly the oldest surviving hand-painted Indian cinema movie poster, the 1924 Kalyan Kajina. Most of the authentic hand-painted Bollywood posters of the 1930s and the 1940s have in fact perished. Poster collectors like SMM Osaja continue in their efforts to preserve these now artifacts. In a 2011 CNN International Icon documentary, he discussed his efforts to preserve the Bollywood poster art, specifically of the 19 1940s and the 1930s. He said, I went to all sorts of cities where I could find the posters and I found them dumped in junkyards, found them in shut theatres. I don't see any comparison between the digital art and the hand-painted poster. The hand-painted poster is a work of art. In his book, Bollywood in Posters, the author sets out generally the different eras of Bollywood films, in effect, the eras of hand-painted Bollywood posters. Essentially, the Hindi films of the 1930s were very theatrical. At the time, there was an ongoing social resistance and stigma associated with Hindi films and watching Hindi films. So to contest this, the producers made films based on mythology, religion, history. So in the 1940s and 1950s, Bollywood films dealt more with social issues that included family dramas, romantic musicals, and action films. These overtook the popular costume dramas of the past. Posters during this time gave more prominence to the faces of the actors and indicated the main takeaways from the film in an artistic way. For example, if you look at the Devdas poster of 1955, it showcased the main actor, the legendary Dilip Kumar, and his glass of alcohol in the poster. In the 1960s, Bollywood films moved towards more musicals and romance. Even if it was a theatrical film, romance would be a defining feature in the story. In the 1970s, Amitabh Bachchan's Angry Young Man was the emphasis. His posters in effect featured guns or knives, action backgrounds, and high emotion or anger. Amitabh Bachchan's influence during this time was so great, the posters of this time reflected the angry young man archetype of Bollywood. Would. So in the 1980s, the era of the hand-painted Bollywood poster was really declining and the digital age was of course prospering and finally in the 1990s, the digital press captured the market. In the late 1980s, the hand-painted Bollywood posters were really replaced by sort of printed collages of images and some reports indicate that the last ever hand-painted Bollywood posters were actually Dar and Prahar. I would highly recommend if you are a Bollywood film enthusiast or you're interested in this art form, you should get a copy of this book, Bollywood in Posters by SMM Osaja. I picked up a copy when I was traveling in India. The 
purpose of the hand-painted Bollywood poster was really to grab attention and the colors and the pigments that were used were very vibrant. The style and technique of mixing with linseed oil and the method of showing the very broad brush strokes and finding beauty in that resulted in a very specific art form for the hand-painted Bollywood poster. Poster designers and the artists also considered the taste of the audience at the time that they were creating the poster. For instance, the angry young man archetype played by Amitabh Bachchan in the 1970s would translate to the poster having elements of shades of red in the background or on his face. The work is very thoughtful and the Bollywood poster artist painstakingly tried to achieve perfection in the final painting. The colors and the design, it's collaborative work in nature. This results in these Bollywood posters being somewhat of a glimpse of Indian society or the changing Indian society at the time. I've watched a lot of interviews while researching for this video and it's pretty clear that the Bollywood poster artists at the time had to balance the wants of the advertisers with their own artistic expression. So in the 2015 documentary original copy, the Bollywood poster artist S. Rahman explained how advertisers wanted the actors depicted in the paintings to have a normal body-like skin tone in the paintings. Whereas he, being the artist, prefers using colors like green, pink, blue or red for the skin of the actors in the paintings. He sees it as an element of his own artistic expression. He explains that the painting has more of a deeper interpretation and meaning with these colors and it's a fascinating insight into the mind of the Bollywood poster artist. Another really interesting aspect is the ever-evolving title designs of the posters. The art of kind of arranging the letters and text in a way that make it visually appealing while also being legible and clear. It was a major part of the designing process and in the paper Significance of Typography and Composites in Hindi Film Posters, letters are often decorated with shadow for a clear emphasis as well as to provide a three-dimensional look. At the beginning of 1970, a dramatic increase in the use of expressive typography in the title design has been seen. Similar creative displays can be seen in the flame-colored letters in Cholet. Before the digital revolution, hand painting lettering used to be the most characteristic feature of film publicity. The title design in the film poster was done either by lettering or calligraphy. It's also interesting to note that when many Bollywood poster artists lost their work because of the rise of the digital age, they found other work in painting street signboards for local shops. And as a result, this influenced the streetscape of India. These signboards and the design of the letters were uniquely Indian based based on the latest style, layout, color, visual texture and composition of Bollywood film title. In terms of India article, the founder of Indian Hippie and BollywoodMoviePosters.com, Hinesh Jatwani, commented that. What is sad in all of this is that this generation of painters who created these pieces of art are passing away without anyone taking the baton from them. Studying this art form takes four to five years. These painters were self-taught and they used rudimentary techniques which are not taught in art schools. These painters captured the raw emotions of the film from the stills and created these visual treats which have become part of memorabilia today. hundred years down the line, people may not have any reference to the art of creating these hand-painted posters unless someone steps up and takes the baton forward. Most of the history of the art form, Bollywood poster artists remained anonymous and they never really received the acclaim that they truly deserved. The 2011 CNN International Icon Show, former Bollywood poster artist Lucas Mondal pointed out the challenging nature of hand painting Bollywood billboards around the city when he had to climb 50 foot high bamboo scaffolding to paint the billboards. He stated that they, the advertisers, used to give us deadlines. We had to achieve that. Sometimes if anybody died also, nobody would know or care what sort of risk we put into our lives to achieve those beautiful paintings. There is one specific Bollywood poster artist better known as Bollywood's last remaining poster painter, Sheikh Abdul Rahman or S. Rahman, who has been the subject of quite a few documentaries on the life of 
a Bollywood poster artist and his world. S. Rehman, like most other Bollywood poster artists, learned the skill and the style from his father. He has practiced this craft for over 50 years and he has both the talent and the passion for the art form. He stated in the same documentary that, It was my fate to become a painter. I'm still holding onto the colors and brushes. They will stay with me until the day I die. In another documentary called In Search of Fading Canvas, M. Bisht, the technical head at the National Museum of Indian Cinema, traced poster artists like S. Rehman and in the 2015 documentary called Original Copy, written, directed and produced by a German father-son duo, S. Rehman provided a face to this beautiful and dying art form. After watching this documentary, it's pretty evident that S. Rehman's personal recollections are just as fascinating as his artwork. He shares his memories of his working interactions with famous Bollywood producers, actors and directors. He also shares his struggles as an artist for ongoing work and his personal struggles, sharing that many in his life do not value the art that he is so skilled at and passionate about. But the 2015 original copy documentary is not about S. Rehman alone. The documentary follows the day-to-day -day lives of the people of Alfred Talkies, a single-screen cinema house in South Mumbai that was established in the 1880s. Today, the cinema house shows lesser-known films or reruns, but the proprietor, the manager, the cleaners, the kiosk attendants, the projectionists, and of course, S. Rehman are all highlighted in this documentary. And the filmmakers really capture with a lot of warmth and humor and empathy the magic of Alfred Talkies. In the documentary, we see that the Bollywood poster artists paint a new banner by hand every week, only to paint over it and start afresh seven days later. It's a really moving documentary and I suggest everyone watch it. The filmmakers described their process in a 2015 article. Matter becomes even more complicated when you consider the purpose behind all this artistic effort. The hand-painted banners are advertisements, not for sophisticated art house films. When no copiers were available in Mumbai, the film posters were painted by hand. But the last cinema in the entire city to do this is the Alfred Talkies. Why all this effort? And so this crazy old cinema, which appears to have stepped out of time, holds not only an abundance of fascinating characters and amazing stories, but also some of life's great questions. What does work signify? What makes us human? How do we cope with failure? Which story should we tell? A nostalgic look back at the golden era of Hindi films, critical commentary on how gentrification is leading to the extinction of cultural institutions in Mumbai, as in every other metropolis, the empowering story of Najma, who, being a woman, was never supposed to take over the cinema, or a family saga about Sheikh Rahman, whose sons are turning away from him because they have realized that there is no future in painting film posters. You might think that the Alfred Talkies is a sad place full of memories of a better age, but on the contrary, it is impossible to imagine a more lively place than the old Hindi picture palace deep in the messy heart of Mumbai. The screen painter's workshop in particular is a magical place where the lines between film and reality are blurred. Good poster art is definitely having a resurgence with millennials and many younger generations. Interestingly, I came across an online brand called Indian Hippie and BollywoodMoviePosters.com. The founder of the brand, Hinesh Dathwani, has been very active for years. His efforts to preserve and revive Bollywood poster art for the artists. In a 2011 Economic Times article, he said that, If you look at hand-painted posters from a global perspective, poster art stands in its own Indian identity. Identity. It doesn't have a parallel anywhere else in the world. Also said later in a 2012 TED talk titled Erosion of Cultural Identities that the loss of this part of Indian popular culture being the hand-painted Bollywood poster is in essence a loss of a part of Indian cultural identity and it deserves to be preserved. It's a very interesting talk. It's available on YouTube if you want to check it out. I also had a look at the Indian Hippie website where there is an effort to preserve Bollywood poster art and support actual remaining Bollywood poster artists by selling these authentic hand-painted Bollywood posters. I think there's also a shop in Mumbai as well. On the website they also had this really interesting custom option where you can send them your own picture and they can paint your face within the poster which I thought was pretty cute.
There are many Bollywood films and posters that are just iconic and immediately recognizable to Arden fans. And according to a Times of India article, the actors whose vintage film posters sell the most are Amitabh Bachchan, Devanand, Dilip Kumar, and Raj Kapoor. That reportedly the highest selling Bollywood posters are Mughal Yazam, Awara, Guide, Shole, Mother India, Mahal, Kagas Khepul, and Don. Let's discuss some of my favorite Bollywood posters that I think everyone should know about as well. First poster is Alam Ara, it's from 1931. And this is a poster of India's first talkie, meaning a film with sound as opposed to a silent film. It indicates the information of the film. I just think it's kind of interesting that this was the first for um, India's first talkie. Okay, the second is this one from 1935. It's called Hunter Wali, and this is a stunt film series this series I believe lasted more than a decade and it was interesting because the leading actress was actually a Scottish woman and she was popularly called Fearless Nadia in the series and she brought a novelty to Indian screens. I believe that these posters are really expensive at this point because they're so rare to find. The next one is the 1949 Barsat poster. This poster is one of my favorites because the colors are so vibrant. In the image we see this romantic pair of the Indian silver screen Nargis and Raj Kapoor. Raj Kapoor is the great grandfather of Ranbir Kapoor of today, I think. And what was kind of interesting is that recently I went to watch Ranbir Kapoor's film Tu Juti Me Makar and the poster kind of reminded me of his great grandfather's poster in Barsat, like the way the figures are positioned. I'm not sure if this was intentional or if this was just a coincidence. Let me know in the comments if you can see the similarities or if it's just me, I don't know. The 1955 film poster with the tragic figure of Devdas who becomes an alcoholic and this role was played by the legendary Dilip Kumar. And in the poster, the main actor is center stage with a glass of alcohol in full focus. And interpretation of the story of Devdas in this poster is really a lonely and sad one. And um, it's a fitting combination for this poster. I also wanted to compare it to the 2002 poster that I am very familiar with. It's Shah Rukh Khan, Ashwarya Rai and Madhuri Dixit. And in it, we see a similarity. Shah Rukh Khan in the middle as a main focus as well with the alcohol. In this one, we really see the two very important women in the life of Devdas as well. I also wanted to add that Devdas has been adapted from the book quite a few times in Bollywood. First during the silent film era in Hindi cinema and then in 1935 with K.L. Segal as Devdas. And this was the poster in 1935. So we can kind of see the three different posters throughout the ages. The next poster is Mother India in 1957. So this is perhaps one of the most famous movies and movie posters in film history. As stated by S. Rahman in the CNN International Icons documentary, there is a story to the Mother India poster. There is a tension on her face. Not everyone will understand what burden she is carrying on her shoulders. Why is she plowing the field instead of the bull? People want to find Find out. He also pointed out in that documentary the detail added um, to the neck to show a strain um, and an added stress on her neck specifically. Next is 1960 Mughal Yazam. And this is another poster that I love from the hand-painted Hollywood film poster era. Madhubala is one of my favorite actresses from this time as well. So I love this film. I love the hand-painted Bollywood poster specifically because of her. In the original copy documentary, Bollywood poster artist S. Rahman discussed Mughal Yazam and the poster as well and how stylistically the wedge between the king and Prince Salim was Anarkali, so they showcased it on the poster. He said that this is why Anarkali was set out as a looming figure in the portrait between the father and son. Next film poster that I want to talk about is 1965 Guide, and this film was quite bold for its time. And in this poster, we see Devanand alone and his face exhibiting a kind of remorse or anguish. The main character in this film, being him, is a very imperfect man, and we really see this depicted in this vintage poster. We're going to talk about the 1970s Amitabh 
Amitabh Bachchan posters. 1970s belonged to Amitabh Bachchan and have vibrant red colors to illustrate his anger and frustration. Of action in the background, the inclusion of guns and knives. This was all very popular and there's so many of these that look quite similar but just as interesting in each one. This is the end of the video guys. If you've made it to the end you're probably a Bollywood poster art and artists fan like me. I would like to know your favorite Bollywood posters in the comments. Which one stands out to you? Which one is the most striking? And I hope you have a good rest of your day. I will see you guys in the next video.